Okay, this is um, this one's going to be slightly uh, different to my to my other other videos. Um, I, I saw a couple of YouTube videos on IR spec. So what I thought I would do is I, I created some resources that are available on mapsandscience.net and also test test.co.uk, the Times Education Supplement um, website. And one of those resources is worksheet, and it's a host of um, spec IR spec questions so anyway I thought I'd uh, do a little video on them um, because I'm like that <laughs> I'm having an insane afternoon a lot of the videos I've made this afternoon are absolutely stark raving bonkers I don't know why um, there you go you have those days so anyway I'm also going to try to use my pause facility on cam studio I really like open source um, so I'm going to I'm going to try to use a pause facility. So if things go wrong, bear with me. So we we'll start with the question here. The infrared spectrum shown below is either that of butan two all or that of butanone. Identify the compound to which this infrared spectrum refers. You may find it helpful to refer to the table of IR absorption infrared absorption data on the back of the periodic table, table one. Okay. I would serious look at table one but there's kind of things as you, as you do this more and more often you get kind of used to seeing and one of these things and I've, I've just put picked um, picked my blue pen on one of these things that you get kind of used to seeing is in the absorption spectra if you've got a huge peak like this I see it's, it's a manky is what I'm trying to you have this huge bulge, this huge absorption. Whenever you have a huge absorption like this, it's OH. And it's the OH of an alcohol. Um, and that's one of the things that triggers me straight away. So as soon as I look at it, I thought, oh, hello, this big bulge is missing. So it cannot be an alcohol. So butan to all, see you later, bye bye. So it must be, this must be butanone. It must be the ketone butanone. This is butanone, and there's a number of different reasons you can put down for it. And and the one I would, because I'm used to seeing it, there's no peak, there is there's no characteristic, um, characteristic absorption. Um, at ooh, let me take a rough guess. If I was looking at a table, which I'm not going to flip to, I think it's around about three thousand two hundred two hundred fifty ish. Um, I'd get the exact number off the table. So I put like, no characteristic absorption at 3,200-ish, um, which is characteristic, uh, which is for an alcohol group, for an OH, from an alcohol group. Specifically picking the frequency at which I would expect for buta uh, for buta and to all, um, and the other two. two Um, it does say question nine, but it's a different question nine. It's from a, it's from a different um, it's from a different year, and um, I shouldn't really be saying this, but questions do kind of look similar in many ways. In this one, it says the infrared spectrum of one of these isomeric alcohols, and what you had question nine here was some some alcohols. I, d I haven't shown them because you don't need them for this question. Um, identify one feature of the infrared spectrum which supports the fact that this is an alcohol. You might, may find it helpful to refer to table one on the data sheet. I explain how infrared spectroscopy can be used to identify this isomeric alcohol. Well, let me see, I've got my pen on, I've got my pen on, I've got my pen on. Okay. <laughs> When we 
discussing the characteristics, identify one feature in the infrared spectrum. One feature is we have a peak. And we have this peak, and this the pen's being weird. We have this peak, and I think, oh, you'll have to look on the table. I think it's about 3250. 3250, oh. you'll see it on the table. So you have this characteristic peak about 3250, oh. um, um, and this is, and this is for, for an OH group, an alcohol OH group, and this is for an, uh, I'm sorry, here for an alcohol group, and that's your one mark. <laughs> really naughty. You see, it doesn't say identify which one, it says explain how infrared spectroscopy can be used. I can't say spectroscopy. Alright. Um, below 1500. We call it a fingerprint region. Uh, um, and I'm going to be naughty. I hope I haven't cut that off. I don't. Fingerprint region. And I'm going to be naughty because what I would then say for my second mark is and compare to a database. Because uh, that's actually um, a database of known a database of known compounds. Because that's actually what they do. Y you don't sit there looking at an IR spec anymore. You just feed it into a computer. You feed your um, sample into 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 a IR spec machine. It compares its spec um, to a database of specs um, and tells you what you've got. And there you go. I got one mark for saying my OH group, the second mark for discussing the fingerprint region, my third mark for comparing to a database. And that's that. I think we should pause again. I quite like the pausey thing. Let's switch my pen off. <laughs> So, so we would. We, we look and look on table one. Um, oh, let's have the question first. I like that um, and if I look here oh, what 15 60 I haven't got peak about there it's no peak and if I look 50 16 ish there we go we got a peak what's carbon carbon double bond peak 
that's all you have to do. You just have to read the table. So R, let's clear this. R is here we go, here we go, here we go, there we go, here we go. R is represented by spectrum two. Let's go to red. R is uh, spectrum two. The reason being spectrum two because we have absorption. Uh, ab absorption uh, absorption is it round about you'll, you'll, you'll have to be exact you, you, you'll have to look at your table for this I'm working from memory and as I get old my memory gets worse that's a 16 20 centimeter yeah and there you go there are my two marks one for spectrum 2 one for 16 20 step type of uh, isomerism this is functional so function Functional group isomerism. Functional group because, wow, you've got a double bond in there and stuff. Name one possible compound which could be S. Now, S has more double bonds. It's saturated, yet it's got two hydrogens less. So it's going to be cyclo. It's going to have to be a cyclo. Um, and if it's going to be a cyclo, we are going to what? I can't remember how many was it? Was it? Was it six cyclohexane? Oh, please be six, because I don't want to scroll back up. If it was six carbon cyclohexane, um, I'm really. That was helpful.